Hello and welcome to this episode of Sales Secrets from the Top 1%, where the world's best sales experts share their secrets to success. And I'm thrilled to have with me today, Bob Berg. Bob is one of the top speakers and authors of numerous books and topics on sales, marketing, influence, negotiation, persuasion. One of his most infamous books, The Go-Giver, a Wall Street Journal and Business Week bestseller, which has sold over 700,000 copies since its release and has consistently stayed in the top 25 of 1-800-CEO reads business book, bestseller lists, you name it. It's been translated in 21 different languages. It's on the top charts of Inc. Magazine, most motivational books ever written, and was on HubSpot's 20 most highly rated sales books of all time. Bob's been named a top 30 leader in business by the American uh, Management Association. And he currently hosts the podcast, The Go-Giver Podcast, where he interviews top entrepreneurs and business leaders. Bob, thank you so much for joining us today. My pleasure, Brandon. Great to be with you. Congrats on all your success. You're certainly leading the field. Ah, oh, man, I'm trying to keep up with you. By the way, th this book is on sales secrets where, where expert leaders like yourself sh spill the, the, the goods. How do you sell? And I know you've, you've actually sold over a million copies of your books. How do you sell 700, 800, a million books? That's wild. Uh, well, first of all, you know, you get a, like anything else, you get a plan together and you work the plan and you do it consistently. There's no, there really is no secret sauce about that. I mean, you just, uh, you know, so I've been doing since the first book came out and there are four in the series now co-authored with John David Mann. And, um, and since the first one came out about 12 years ago, I do two or three interviews a day. I continue wow. to post on it, guest post, you know, do everything I can. I speak on the topic still, and uh, you just do it consistently like anything else. And um, we've had a lot of good people who've taken hold of it and referred it to others and yada, yada, yada. And uh, eventually it happens. That's awesome. And, and by the way, for the audience tuning in that may not have read your books or have read one or two different books, you know, what's your background? How did you get started in business, sales, marketing to the success that you've achieved today? So I began as a broadcaster, actually, first in radio doing sports. And then I was the, uh, the late night news guy at a very, very small ABC affiliate in the Midwest. This is, I guess, about 40 years ago, a little more than that. And uh, but I really wasn't very good at it. I could read the news, but I certainly wasn't a, a journalist by any means. And I kind of graduated into sales. Uh, the nice. challenge was that I knew nothing about sales. I had no formal training and the um, training where I was working will will say was negligible at best really was non-existent. So I was out there really floundering. I just had no idea what I was doing. I was really working hard at doing the wrong thing. You know, I thought selling was just, you know, knock on doors, make calls, get in front of someone, talk incessantly about your product, blah, 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 blah. And, and you know, so I was what Jim Rohn, the, the great, you know, old sales philosopher who used yeah. to, would, would have described as, I had the motivation, but not the information. So I was really going nowhere, but really fast. Uh, of course, you know, you, you have to have the information, but you also have to have the motivation. So if you have the information, not the, you, the motivation, you're, you're also not going to go anywhere. And so, um, I, so I was, I was very frustrated. Uh, but one day I was in a bookstore and there were two books on sales that I saw, which by the way, that doesn't sound like any big deal now, but back then yet yeah, that wasn't as much a thing. You didn't see that all the time. I was surprised. Yeah. I didn't know there was such a thing as a book on how to sell, right? Wow. Sounds crazy now, but who, you know, well, one, one book was by Tom Hopkins and one book was by Zig wow. Ziglar, two of the biggest legends, of course, in the of sales course. profession. And, uh, you know, I always say, Brandon, I got those books, took them home and didn't read them. I devoured them. Okay. So every night after I got back from work, I would open up those books. I would read them. I would study them. I would highlight. I would take notes. I would dog ear. I would, you know, practice and drill and do all the, well, here's the thing. About three weeks later, my sales began to go through the roof. Mm. And the only difference between where I had been three weeks earlier and where I was now was I had a methodology, a system, a way of doing something to this day. 
I personally define a system as simply the process of predictably achieving a goal based on a logical and specific set of how-to principles, the key being predictability. If it's been proven that by doing A, you'll get the desired results of B, then you know all you need to do is A and continue to do A and continue to do A, and eventually you'll get the desired results of of B. So that was really, you know, the start of it. Then I start, I, so I began really making a study of sales. And of course, as you know, a big part of selling is the general um, personal development that you go through. Uh, and I, so I started reading all the classics that I'm sure you have on your bookshelf as well. The how to win friends and influence people and the magic of thinking big and the science of getting rich. And as a man thinking, you know, think and grow rich, all the, the classics. And, uh, you know, eventually I, I worked my way up to sales manager of another company, started showing others how to do it was working for me. And then, it, then eventually I, I, it kind of morphed into a, uh, into a business. So, you know, that, that's really it. I mean, there's nothing special about it other than I learned some skills, uh, developed them, uh, you know, made some shifts based on my own ways of doing some things as well and, and, and took it to that next level. That's amazing. Yeah, it's funny because when, when I wrote this book, I, I bought your books, I bought 250 other sales books and marketing wow. and business books and spent a decade reading them, trying to distill the secrets, right? And I'm like, you know, why don't we don't just interview the experts and get their top secrets and then put it in the, <laughs> like, why waste a decade? You know, not waste, but sure. um, I, no, so I, I love your theory because I talk about my epiphany as well as yours, like, oh my gosh, there's experts like yourself who have done this their whole lives and written about it and documented their journey. It's crazy that you, like right after you got the Tom Hopkins and, and you said what, Brian Tracy? Uh, Zig Ziglar, but also Zig Brian Ziglar. Tracy. I studied at Brian was great. You know, I love Brian's work. Yeah. 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 And, and it just clicked and you're like, oh my God, I'm going to keep buying and doing more, huh? Exa- oh, exactly. And the more I, I learned, the more I wanted to learn. Uh, it was just really such a, a, you know, a wonderful experience. I just, you know, I love sales. Uh, I love to sell. I love to buy. And I love to buy from people who love to sell. Perfect. And when I That's say love great. to sell, I mean, they sell the right way that I know they're interested in me. Mm-hmm. And when I sell, I'm interested in the other person. You know, and that's one of the things we know about selling, right? That it's never about the salesperson. You know, it's never about the product or service, even as important as those are. It's always about how we're going to add value, bring immense value to the lives of those we're serving. Yeah, that's awesome. That's amazing. And and, and Bob, curious. So you, you had a ton of success. And what types of companies were you selling throughout the, the years when, when you were scaling up before you kind of... I'm curious here, what, what types of products you were selling? And then when did you pivot to do your own thing with the writing and the coaching and the consulting and the keynote speaking? So the, the two main ones were uh, advertising, television and radio advertising and uh, solar energy um, uh, water heaters to, um, to homeowners. Wow. Yeah. Totally, total opposite sides, by the way. Yeah, I know that that was so cool about it. And yet, you know, the principles of sales are, of course, you know, always the same. Awesome. That's great. So, you know, this book, we we try to identify, you. if you could go back in time, your 20-something year old self, your 18 year old self, your 25 year old self, whatever it is, the top secrets that you would tell yourself if you started from scratch, could, could you know, reincarcerate and, and, and like fresh slate, the things that would maximize your success as quickly as possible. What would be your your top two or three secrets? And I want you to save your number one secret for last. So we keep the the listeners tuned in. Okay. So I I would say this uh, and I can, I can really summarize it with something that happened in my life. Uh, and this is when I was working, um, for, and it was for that solar energy, uh, company and I was in a sales slump actually. And I was in a pretty massive slump and my focus really 
became myself and, and which is the worst thing you can do when you're in a, a yeah. slump but that's you know that's what it was hap- what was happening and i remember coming back to the office one day and one of the the older guys there at the office and he was not in sales i think he was in the engineering department i really didn't know him very well uh he was one of these people he didn't say a lot but um whenever he did something did say something it was usually pretty profound so when he when he and I think he saw me as sort of like Joe, the protagonist in the story that I would later co-author with with John David Mann uh, as that kind of young, ambitious, up and coming, aggressive, you know, lots of potential, but not but very frustrated and not near, f- you know, fulfilling his potential. I think he saw me that way and he, he was right. And he, he and he said to me, Berg, he was a, a last name kind of guy. And he, he said, Berg, can I give you some advice? And uh, I said, yeah, absolutely. Please do. I, I need it. And he said, if you want to make a lot of money in sales, he said, don't have making money as your target. Your target, he said, is serving others. Now, when you hit the target, you'll get a reward. And that reward will come in the form of money. And you can do with that money, whatever you choose, but never forget. He said, the money is simply the reward for hitting the target. It ain't the target itself. Your target is serving others. Mm. That's when it hit me. That's that's, that was a secret to me because I really didn't understand that until that point, but then I did. And this came from an engineer. Yeah. He was not in sales. He was, yeah. Yeah, the interesting thing, I, I refer to him as a what I call a drive-by mentor. Got it. And my friend, one of my friends, the great leadership authority, Dondi Scumachi, and she's really one of my main ongoing mentors in life. And I, I think she actually coined the term, and I probably just agreed because that's usually how it is <laughs> with us. And we I call it drive-by mentor. And a drive-by mentor is someone who just, you know, you may know this person a little bit or not at all, or have said hello to them, or uh, again, you could just, for whatever reason, this person happens to come along with the exact right piece of advice at the exact right time you need to hear it, and at the exact right time that you are open to listening to it. <laughs> so I'll be that. forever grateful to that that man. Uh, That's for, wild. For and and then what did you decide to do? Like. He tells you this, right? And you're probably like, I mean, because if I'm brand new in sales, I feel like, okay, yeah, sure. I have to hit my number. I have to get commissions to survive and thrive. Like, was it hard for you to, to disseminate that and then change your behaviors and change your sales strategy and tactics? Yeah. So, well, here's the, here's the thing. Uh, you know, I think a lot of times too, when people hear the term, you know, go giver, which is the name of, of one of the books, They think, oh, so you're saying you don't, uh, you know, you don't care about the actual sale or making money or setting goals. Oh, of course, all of that is important. All of that's important. Being a go giver simply means you understand that shifting your focus, and this is the key, shifting your focus from getting to giving. And when we say giving in this context, we simply mean constantly and consistently providing immense value to others, understanding that not only is not only is doing so a more pleasant way of conducting business, it's the most financially profitable way as well. And not for some woo-woo way out there, magical, mystical reasons. It makes logical sense. When you're that person, Brandon, who can take your focus off of yourself and place it on making that other person's life better, right? People feel good about you. They want to get to know you. They like you. They trust you. They want to be in a relationship with you. They want to buy from you. They want to refer you to others. Uh, you know, I often say when I when I speak at sales conferences, one of the first things I'll say is, hey, you know, nobody is going to buy from you because you have a quota to meet. Right? They're not going to buy from you because you need the money or have a mortgage payment. They're not even going to buy from you because you're a really nice person. They're going to buy from you because they believe that they will be better off by doing so than by not doing so. And in a free market based economy, and when I say free market, I simply mean no one is forced to buy from anyone else. 
It's the only reason anyone should buy from you or from me or from anyone else, because they believe they'll be better off by doing so. Now, this is great news for the people who will take the advice of that older guy, right? Because it means that that salesperson who can, again, move from an I focus or me focus or even product focus to an other focus, <clears throat> okay? Simply looking to discover what the other person needs, wants, or desires and helping them to get it. That's the person who creates that benevolent context for success. It's the person who earns the trust of that other person. Uh, this is why John David Mann and I say that money is simply an echo of value. It's the thunder to values lightning, right? So the, fo the focus must be on the value. That comes first. The money you receive is a very natural result. So it's not a matter of not having a quota or having a quota, or, or it's not a matter of not setting goals or all those things are important if that's what you, but it's, it's, it's understanding that the quota that you have or the goal that you have isn't the reason that other person's going to buy from you. No, yep. you yep. need to focus on them. I love that. And, and a lot of people just, the, the, you know, I'm seeing different questions come in. You know, when they, when, when they say, how, how do you show value? How do you show servant leadership? Like, you know, it, does that mean sending them case studies? Like, how do you define or do that, I guess, for the audience to execute that? Yeah, well, at first, it, it depends what you do. But let's, but, so let's take a, 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 a more a general look, okay? Yep. It's understanding first the difference between price and value. All right. Price is a dollar figure. It, it's a dollar amount. It's finite. It is what it is. Mm -hmm. Value is simply this. It's the relative worth or desirability of a thing, of something to the end user or beholder. In other words, what is it about this thing, this product, service, concept, idea, what have you, information, connections, what have that brings so much worth to another human being that they will appreciate it that they will exchange their money for it if we're talking about the actual product or service and be absolutely glad they did while you make a very healthy profit. Now, value starts at the beginning of the relationship from that first connection, whether it's an outbound call or an inbound call or, or, or uh, the person coming to your website because they, they saw a special report that they wanted and now you can engage with them or someone you meet at the local charity event or chamber of commerce, you know, business exchange, you know, what have you, it doesn't matter. And it's that, that way that you make that person feel about themselves as well as about you throughout the entire relationship building process through the, the follow-up and the follow through, through the sales and, uh, and referral process through at every touch point. Okay. We, you know, we always say there are five elements of value that, that separate you, that can distinguish you from everyone else. And those are excellence, consistency, attention, empathy, and appreciation. And again, those will manifest differently depending upon your product or service, whether it's a, uh, whether your, your sale is a fairly straightforward one or whether it's a complex sale, you know, again, so those all depend, but understand that you are that additional value because most products and services work and they work pretty well. If, if a prospective customer or client cannot distinguish between any two or more products or services, well, they're naturally going to go with who has the lowest price. And unless your last name is uh, Walmart or, or I guess Amazon.com, trying to make low price your unique selling proposition is not a good way to do business. It's not productive. It's not profitable. It's not sustainable. When you sell on low price, you're a commodity. When you sell on high value, you're a resource. So again, everything you do at every touch point is now, but here's the thing, and this is, this is so important. Remember what we were talking about in terms of value, it's relative worth, right? So we understand that value is always in the eyes of the beholder. It's not what we think 
is valuable about either our product or service or the connections we make or the touch points we have or the, or the case study that we have or whatever. Uh, it's, what, it's, it's what that other person deems to be a value, which is why it's so important to focus on them and what they're looking for. Wow, I, I love that. And, and that was, so we basically went from learning servant leadership and, and really serving others from the engineer that you met to, to really breaking it down to delivering value, becoming an asset versus a commodity. Yeah. Um, wow. What were, you know, what was another life changing, you know, I would call it a game changer, right? A sales secret, you know, before we get into your number one top sales secret, what was mm -hmm. another one that, that comes to mind to you? Well, I mean, I think it's really understanding how important people skills are when it comes to when it comes to sales, when it comes to leadership, when it comes to to life. I consider people skills the major differentiator in terms of, of any type of success, um, because, you know, again, it, it you know, it, that's not to say that technical skills and um, uh, just talent is not important. It is. I mean, it's yeah. very, very important, of course. But at this point, talent and technical skills and all those other things, they're kind of the, the entry fee into the game. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you, like you have to have, like, there's a lot of talented people, you know, for all we hear about, well, there's talented, uh, you know, there's not a whole lot. Yeah, there are, <laughs> right? There's, there's a lot of talent out there. And you can get to a certain level of success through talent and hard work and all the, the, those are important. But it's the ability to be able to relate to another person and to relate to them on their level and relate to them in a way that, that, and I mentioned this a little bit earlier, but it's so important, that makes them feel good about themselves. But it's got to be in a very genuine, authentic way. There's nothing more dangerous than a bad person with good people skills. <laughs> OK, so yeah. it's, it's important that you really authentically do care about this person and about adding value to their life. And I think it was really a, a big thing for me to realize that how much sales really is uh, that, you know, that pe that person to person relationship. Uh, yeah, I've, I've often said and I've built my sales career and my, I guess, speaking and writing career around the very basic premise that all things being equal, people will do business with and refer business to those people they know, like, and trust. Mm, know, like, and trust. I love that. And the people skills that, what's the best way for the audience and the listeners tuning in right now to sales secrets? How would you recommend them develop people skills? You know, if they're smart or hardworking, like the fastest way to do that. Well, you know, the book, uh, How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie is still the, the top book probably ever, you know, in nice. that regard. Awesome. Um, I have a book called Adversaries into Allies, um, which to me is, you know, the, my favorite book of all that I've written, just because to me, really? it's, it's such an important, um, you know, it's such an important element of, of success. But I'd still go with Carnegie's book first. That's the, you know, he was the master. Uh, of that. That's but, awesome. uh, and there's, there's lots of good books out there on people's skills. So I, I I'd make a study of it. Uh, yeah. Amazing. Amazing. Well, I appreciate that, Bob. So coming down to the final wire, you know, the last, last question before the rapid fire, quick, quick questions, your number one top sales secret, you know, that you would tell your son, daughter, or you would tell yourself if you went back in time, what would, yeah. what would that be? So a gentleman by the name of Harry Brown, who was a, a personal hero of mine, he, he wrote a number of books, but there was one that got published after his, his death that uh, wow. was never even supposed to get published. He wrote these two manuscripts in the uh, 60s, back when he had a sales team. When he passed uh, in about 2007, his, his widow, Pamela, had found these two um, brief manuscripts on, the, uh, uh, on his hard drive. Like there? Yeah, she contacted someone, an uh, independent publisher who published it under the title of The Secret of Selling Anything. 
Mm. And because it was a phrase that Harry used in the, the book where he said, and, and here's the, here's the big secret. Okay. What Harry said is the secret of selling need not be a secret. The secret of selling is simply find out what the other person wants and help them to get it. Mm. Wow. That's I love that. Big find secret. out what they want, help them, help to get them get it. it. That's the that's, secret. That's it. And, and where did you, you got this from Harry, Harry who, and what? Yeah. Book? His name was Harry Brown. This is actually the book. You can see it's pretty dog-eared and, and uh, lots of notes. It's a, a short book. It was written in the 60s. So it's got, you know, 60s language in it and so forth. But the principles are still intact. It was really about understanding human nature which Harry was phenomenal when it came to understanding and respecting human nature. The first part of the book is all about just understanding human nature. The second part is how it relates to sales. And um, to me, it is just, it's the, it, you know, it's that if there was only one book you could, and of course there's not, there's hundreds, but thousands. But if there was only one, this would be the one that to me would equip a person. I did a review of his of this book on my uh, blog uh, several years ago at Berg B U R G dot com slash blog. If you'll just put in this in the search, the secret of selling or Harry Brown B R O W N E, you wow. can read the review on it. And it, to me, it's a book I think everyone in selling should have. Find what they want, help them get there. I yeah. love it. That's amazing. I'm gonna have to pick that up. And and you actually so. Amazing. I, I appreciate you kind of spilling, spilling the secrets here for, for the audience and for the book and your chapter. Now we're just going to go into quick rapid fire questions. Okay. You're, I was just going to ask you, what's your favorite book? Is that, is Harry's book your favorite book or is there a different one? Um, I, this is my favorite book when it comes to sales. Probably my favorite all time book yes. is a book it, that was written in 1900 called Peace, Power, and Plenty by Orison Sweat Marden. Uh, Mr. Marden is the person many people call the founder of the personal development movement. He's actually the founder of Success Magazine. OK, and so this is a book and this is one of the original editions. So I wouldn't even actually write or take notes in it. I took notes on the sticky notes and then put the sticky notes in there. So almost every page has absolute gems. You think about it. Peace, power and plenty. So peace, mm -hmm. inner peace, power, having that control over yourself and being able to operate wow. from a productive standpoint and then plenty, which is abundance. So wow. peace, power and plenty by Orson Sweat Martin. That's amazing. What is your favorite habit? Oh, my goodness. I'd say reading. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I was going to infer that, but yeah, you, you, you seem like a big reader just because, wait, like, why, why you could, why is reading your favorite habit? Uh, I, I, I learn a lot and I enjoy it. I mean, it doesn't get any better than that. <laughs> That's awesome. How do you stay so motivated, Bob? Like right now with all your success, you could probably just call it quits and not do anything. How do you stay motivated? I think I believe in the message and that I, I have a, a need to be able to impact a lot of people's lives. I mean, uh, and I don't think that's anything special about me. I think as human beings, we're built that way, right? We want to be part of something bigger. We want to feel we're making a contribution. Uh, and when we can enjoy what we do, I mean, you know, what, what else would I do? But what I do, you know, I mean, I just really love it. Uh, that's amazing. And then what do you do when you, how do you get unstuck? When you're down in the dumps, things aren't going well. What do you do to get unstuck and moving again? Well, I counsel with people who I, I trust and whose advice I respect and, and so forth. But what it really ends up coming down to is just taking the action that you've got to do. And, you know, there's times we all feel it. I mean, we're human beings and we get discouraged and we, you know, but, you know, we've all also got a choice. <laughs> we can do nothing and stay where we are or we can take action. And I think we we kind of act our way out of that feeling. You know, action precedes feeling. We've all all been not all, but so many of us have been taught that, you know, you've got to feel a certain way before you do it. And that's actually not correct. It's actually the opposite. We act our way into feeling. That's awesome. 
And when it comes to, you know, what is, who are you following right now? Mm, mm, mm. I mean, there's many people that I follow. Uh, people like Dan Rockwell of Leadership Freak, uh, which is a, a very, very big blog. Uh, there are people like Dondi Scumachi, who's a great leadership speaker. I mentioned her earlier. There's Randy Gage, who really is, to me, the go-to guy is in terms of prosperity thinking right now. Wow. Um, wow. There's just so many great people out there that, you know, awesome. that I'm just privileged to be able to, to study and follow and learn from. Great. And then outside of sales and, you know, outside of sales advice, what would what would be your advice to your 20 year old self? Uh, it would really be to learn and understand human nature, to make an ongoing study of human nature, because when you think about it, it's everything that we do, everything we do, we deal with other humans. Right. So mm -hmm. when we understand human nature, uh, which is really the, the general psychological characteristics, feelings, and, and actions of, of, you know, that are common to all humanity, right? It doesn't mean everyone specifically does the same thing. Of course not. But it's understanding that there are, and Harry Brown talks about that in his, his book, of course. Yeah. Um, but that when we understand human nature and how it, how it affects the actions of ourselves as well as others, we're really nine steps ahead of the game in a 10-step game. That's awesome. Wow. Bob Berg, where can the audience learn from you, connect with you, follow you for more? Uh, the best place is really Berg, B-U-R-G dot com. Berg .com. Well, thank you, Bob, so much for joining us. Audience tuning in. Welcome to this episode of Sales Secrets. The world's top salespeople share their secrets to success. You can pick up the number one bestseller on Amazon, on Audible, Spotify, Kindle, you name it, wherever they sell books, it's a number one bestseller. So pick it up. Bob's chapter will get added. Thank you, Bob. And go connect with Bob at Berg.com.